Alexa, can you help me code? According to WikiHow, to code, start by choosing a programming language that you want. Hey Siri, can you help me code? I'm here to help. Get to know Siri at apple.com. Okay, now. Okay, Google. Can you help me code? Sorry, I didn't understand. <sighs> I just wish there was some sort of AI out there that could help me code. Advent of LLMs, coders have been trying to see if AI can code themselves. Well, today, in the summer of 2023, turns out they can't, to varying degrees of success. In this video, I'll be showing you how I, as a developer, use AI to help me code. Which tools are the best at doing which tasks? Let's find out. Today, I have four AI-powered tools to show you. StarCoder, GitHub Copilot, ChatGPT, and Gorilla. I'll be testing them on two different coding tasks, both in Python. The first is general programming. I'm gonna test each AI tool's ability to write a function that requires no specific knowledge, just pure logic and Python syntax. Kind of like a coding interview. Then I'm gonna test their ability to use an API. I wanna showcase each AI's ability to write code that requires special knowledge of documentation and syntax. More specifically, we'll see how well these AIs perform when asked to use an artificially intelligent speech-to-text API. Now, it's important to note that these AI models aren't perfect. You, as a software engineer or developer or data scientist, will have to change the output of these artificially intelligent coders, as you'll see pretty soon. But really, the main utility of these models is to reduce the amount of time that you spend typing and writing sort of trivial functions. At least that's their use right now. Who knows where we'll be next year? Anyway, that being said, if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's go. Let's begin with the so-called new kid on the block, StarCoder. StarCoder has caught the eye of the AI developer community because no other open source model has scored as high as it did on the human eval benchmark, with a score of over 40%. In other words, if we put StarCoder in a who can code best competition, humans would win first place, but it would get second place. What makes StarCoder so good at its job is the model's underlying architecture. See, the StarCoder model is built on top of a GPT-2 model, yes, a predecessor of ChatGPT's underlying model, and is trained on a dataset known as the stack, which consists of three terabytes of code from various GitHub repositories. That's one trillion tokens. So basically, StarCoder is beginning to catch up to humans' coding capabilities because it has read more code than any human ever has, and it's starting to understand the patterns it sees. All right, let's see what StarCoder can do. There are a couple of ways that you can use StarCoder, but the simplest is to use their API playground and ask it to write some code for you to use. In order to do that, just Google StarCoder Playground and it should take you to a website where you can essentially play with the AI. This page here allows you to enter code into a text box that StarCoder will then autocomplete. The results will show up in this text box over here. Then you can copy paste that output code into your favorite IDE. Today, I'm using VS Code. All right, first, I'm gonna ask StarCoder one of the very first coding problems I've ever had to solve. Can you write a function in Python that removes all the vowels from a given string that the user inputs? Here's my solution. And now here are the results that StarCoder output. All right, let me copy paste this result into VS Code. And now we can compare them side by side. As we can see in this line, StarCoder really goes the extra mile by doing a little bit of error checking, making sure that the string that the user input consists only of alphanumerics and that there aren't any crazy characters in the input string. Nevertheless, this regex replacement method still works. So if this were a coding interview, I'd say StarCoder gets the job or at least moves on to the next round. All right, now let's see how well it does when I ask it to use an API. Today, our job is simple. Given an input audio file specified by the user, write code that calls the DeepGram API to transfer. It. For reference, this is what the code is supposed to look like. This code was added to GitHub prior to the time StarCoder started training, so it should be able to read and output something similar to this. Just like we did earlier, I'm going to write a comment that tells StarCoder the function that I'm about to write. I'm also going to specify the name of the audio file and show StarCoder the fact that I already have a DeepGram API key ready to go. All I have to do is write def main and it auto completes for me. Once again, let's copy paste this result into VS Code. All right, once more, let's do a side-by-side -side comparison. As we can see here, things get a little weird. These solutions don't look anything alike, and they don't tackle the problem in the same way. For some reason, StarCoder is trying to use a function called upload file here, get uploaded info here, and get upload status here, even though these functions are not found anywhere in the DeepGram documentation. Not to mention, as we can see down here, the playground ran out of room to type, 
so the function was left incomplete. So as we can see, there are limitations to StarCoder when it comes to using APIs that require prerequisite knowledge of syntax and documentation. Nevertheless, we can still see that the logic was decently sound. So keep that in mind when you're trying to use AI to code. As we've seen, these AI models don't know everything, but they do help. They are logical, and they do give us a good starting point. Okay, but what if I don't want to hop back and forth between using the playground and my IDE? What if I just want StarCoder to autocomplete what I'm about to type? Well, luckily, Hugging Face has a VS Code extension that allows you to do just that. Simply search for HF Autocomplete or Hugging Face Autocomplete under the Extensions tab. Then you can download it, enter your Hugging Face API key, and you're good to go. When you download this extension, StarCoder will essentially try to autocomplete your code in the same way that Gmail tries to autocomplete the email you're about to write. So, once again, let's ask those same two questions to StarCoder in this environment. In order for me to use StarCoder here, all I have to do is write a comment in the code explaining the function that I'm about to write. And this is what StarCoder writes for me. So this is what using StarCoder looks like in real time. What I'm doing right now is writing a comment that describes the function I'm about to write. So a function that removes all the vowels from a string. I write def main to define a function and I just wait. Soon enough, we see that it autocompletes up to a certain point. I see that it stops at the beginning of a for loop. So I just press enter and wait again. It autocompletes the rest of the for loop and prints. Then it calls main at the very bottom. All I have to do is write the parentheses to turn that into a function call. And voila, let's take a look at what it says. All right, I'll concede here, StarCoder wrote the function better than I did. And the reason I say that is that its variable names are a bit more descriptive. I was just a little lazy in coming up with mine. And also it commented in the code, whereas I did not. However, overall, both functions do the exact same thing and follow the exact same logic. So props to StarCoder. Note that a lot of AI models are by design probabilistic, so we're not gonna get the same output every time even though we ask the same question. But nevertheless, this is what that looks like. Also note that there is a little bit of latency for StarCoder when we ask it to autocomplete. It takes about a few seconds for it to come up with something, but eventually it does its job. Okay, now let's see how well it does on the API question. Once again, I'm just gonna get StarCoder to complete my code for me. So first I'm gonna import Deepgram to let it know that I'm about to use Deepgram. And then just like before, I'm gonna write a comment that describes the function I'm about to write. So here I'm saying it's a function that takes as input the name of an audio file as an MP3, and then uses the Deepgram API with help from the Deepgram Python SDK to transcribe it. Specifically, I'm mentioning the Deepgram Python SDK because I want StarCoder to know where I want it to get its code from. Where specifically do I want StarCoder to draw its inspiration from, quote unquote. And as you can see here, once I'm finished writing the comment, it autocompletes just like before. And there we go. As you can see, it creates a variable called Deepgram API key as a constant. And because I haven't created that variable yet, it has a little red line under it, but we can fix that. Specifically, I'm just gonna create a constant called Deepgram API key, and then let StarCoder autocomplete the value of that constant for me. Here it says key, I'm not happy with that. I wanna use environment variables. So I'm gonna import OS and then re-autocomplete. And as we can see here, StarCoder knows what I want because now I'm importing OS, so it took the hint use OS to import an environment variable. So if we zoom in, this is what the star coder output looks like. And it's really good. It's way better than the playgrounds output, but it's not perfect. Like I said, in a coding contest, humans would come in first place while star coder would come in second. And this is a scenario in which I, as an experienced developer, will have to make some minor corrections to the AI's output. And this is what that looks like. On the left is StarCoder's original output, and on the right is the final correct code. As you can see, the differences are minor, but without these changes, the function wouldn't work properly. Specifically here, I have to use Python's open function to open the audio file and allow it to be read. And over here, I'm using JSON dumps with an indentation parameter to make sure the output is printed properly to the console in a human readable format. So it just goes to show that AI at this point only knows so much. You, as an experienced developer, will have to correct things here and there. But nevertheless, the AI does speed up the rate at which I produce correct functioning code. <laughs> so as you can see, there is a bit of work to do, but that's StarCoder in a nutshell. Now let's see how it compares with GitHub Copilot. Copilot functions pretty much in the same way as StarCoder. It auto-completes the code that you want to write, but there are a few differences that you'll notice right off the bat. The first difference is the price. Yeah, unlike StarCoder, GitHub Copilot is going to ask to see your wallet before it helps you code. $10 per month or $100 per year. But other than that, to download GitHub Copilot, you follow the exact same routine as you would if you were to download StarCoder. Go to the Extensions tab in VS Code and download it. 
But nevertheless, the moment you install Copilot and start using it, you'll instantly see the second difference between it and Starcoder, the latency, or lack thereof. You see, Copilot auto-completes your code really fast. But okay, speed is one thing, accuracy is another. Let's put Copilot to the test. I'm gonna ask it the same two coding questions that I asked Starcoder. So first, when it comes to removing vowels, here's what we see. Just like before, I'm writing a comment and letting GitHub Copilot auto-complete it for me. And just like that, it's already there, much faster than Starcoder performed. And this function is completely correct. Here, let's zoom in to see what it wrote. Again, the logic here is absolutely perfect. Unlike Starcoder and unlike my own personal solution, GitHub Copilot doesn't explicitly check against the list of lowercase and uppercase vowels, but rather it decides to use this string.lower function to take care of both uppercase and lowercase user inputs. But that way of solving the uppercase lowercase problem is just a matter of taste. Long story short, this function is perfect. And now when we ask Copilot our API question, we get something similar to what Starcoder produced. As usual, I'm leaving a comment describing the function that I want Copilot to autocomplete for me. Note that even though the setup is the same with the imports, the environment variables, and the constants, the output code is different, proving that these two AIs, even though they're trained for the same task, indeed have different brains. Here, however, GitHub Copilot is a lot more concise. Let's examine this code line by line. Just like Starcoder, GitHub Copilot follows a very sound logic. It initializes an instance of DeepGram, it calls a function that attempts to transcribe the file that we specified, and then it prints the response. However, just like Starcoder, Copilot is missing the part where you're supposed to use Python's open function to allow the file to be read, and it's also missing the JSON dumps. However, regarding the JSON, I'll say that's my fault because I forgot to import JSON. Nevertheless, the code that Copilot produces provides a great starting point for me, the experienced human developer, to hop in and start writing perfectly functioning code. Fun fact, Copilot is a fine-tuned version of GPT-3. So these results come from a brain that's pretty similar to ChatGPT. Copilot, much like Starcoder, is built on a GPT model. Specifically, Copilot is built on a model called Codex, which has its roots in GPT-3. So perhaps the reason Copilot has a smaller latency, and in my opinion, a generally better coding style than Starcoder, is that its quote-unquote brain is one generation more advanced than Starcoder's. And perhaps this advanced brain is also the reason for Copilot's increase in price. But how does ChatGPT itself fare in this competition? Let's find out. When it comes to writing code itself, here's a prompt that I personally use if I want ChatGPT to come up with some code for me. You are an expert software engineer with expertise in Python. You also know how to use various APIs such as DeepGrip. Your job is to help me write code and explain what the code we write means. I will ask you a programming problem and you will respond with Python code that accomplishes the task I'm trying to achieve. Given that prompt, here are the results I get when I ask it our same two coding questions. And much like Starcoder and Copilot, ChatGPT does a pretty good job at the vowel removal problem. However, instead of writing everything in a single function, it writes a remove vowels helper function that makes use of Python's built-in string.join functionality. And as you can see here, it prompts the user for input outside of that function and then calls the helper later on. So ChatGPT is thinking more about a larger control flow rather than having everything explicitly inside one big main function. Again, this is a matter of taste or a matter of your actual stack, but if we're judging the model based on its logic alone, then it, like the other two AIs that we've seen, passes this coding interview with flying colors. And now when we ask it our how to use an API question, here are the results that pop up. First, ChatGPT very rightfully pip installs the dependencies, namely DeepGrip. In the second cell, just like before, it's writing a helper function that it intends to use in a larger control flow. And over here, impressively so, it parses the DeepGram JSON output correctly. That being said, it too is missing the part where you're supposed to open the file, and also parts where you're supposed to specify parameters and the config of the AI. But again, the point of ChatGPT, much like the point of Copilot and Starcoder, is to give you, an experienced human developer, a great starting off point to write your code, and of course to save you a good amount of time typing. So again, while the output isn't perfect, in my experience, it has improved my productivity. However, writing code isn't all that ChatGPT can do to help you. See, instead of asking ChatGPT to write code for you, you can actually ask it to help you debug. For example, here's a quote unquote solution I wrote to the remove vowel from strings problem. The bug here is that I replaced the vowels with a space instead of the empty string. And when I asked ChatGPT what's wrong with my code, it explains perfectly not just what I did wrong, but how I can correct it, in plain English as well, as if it were a teacher trying to help a student. So overall, ChatGPT isn't a full-on coder or software engineer, it's more like a cute little assistant that you can ask for 
some help every now and then. ChatGPT, much like StarCoder and Copilot, is trained on a GPT model. However, part of the reason that Copilot and StarCoder seem better at coding is that they were specifically trained on GitHub datasets. Meanwhile, ChatGPT studied GitHub code only as a small part of a larger dataset called the pile. So if you want to understand why Copilot and StarCoder seem better equipped to help you code than ChatGPT does, the intuition is this. All three of these models had to train on a dataset that included GitHub code. However, Copilot and StarCoder focused solely on that code, while ChatGPT only learned coding on the side. Finally, let's talk about the newest, newest kid on the block, Gorilla. See, Gorilla is a large language model that was developed by Berkeley and Microsoft. What makes this LLM so special is that it specializes in making API calls. Unlike the other models in this video, Gorilla is a fine-tuned version of Llama, not GPT. That is, Gorilla's brain stems from Meta's, rather than OpenAI's, collection of large language models, whose size ranges from 7 billion to 65 billion parameters. The difference in models may slightly affect performance, but as of right now, we don't have enough information to conclude whether a Llama model or a GPT model is better suited to write Code. All we know is that both models are capable of filling in the blanks, aka autocompleting, any block of code that isn't fully fleshed out. However, right now it's rather limited in the types of API calls it makes, since it doesn't know every API out there. However, it's still an incredible resource. And you can try it in under 60 seconds, no API key needed or anything. Just go to the website and you'll be able to find a fully fleshed out and written Google Colab Python notebook that you can test and try out. They install dependencies for you in the Colab environment, and then pretty much instantly you can see Gorilla in action. Not only writing API calls that can, for example, translate a sentence from English to Chinese, but Gorilla itself also describes what it's doing and credits the API provider it uses specifically. So although it is still limited in scope, Gorilla shows a promising future for AI models who code. Because of these models can program not just solutions to logic problems, but are also able to use specific APIs, as in APIs that require specific knowledge of both documentation and syntax. Then we're entering a world in which the machines we've built can build themselves. But all right, let's take a step back. What have we learned today? What is the most practical use of these models now in 2023? And what are my recommendations? Well, first things first, do not use AI to teach yourself how to code. If you don't already know how to program and then you're relying on something like ChatGPT to teach you how, you're gonna end up being as bad of a programmer as ChatGPT itself is. AKA the skills that you have will only be as good as an untrained, unfine-tuned AI model who kinda sorta knows how to code based on what it's loosely read in the past. And since we're only at the beginning beginning of the AI revolution, understand that these models are baby programmers. They're novices. So if you are a beginner coder, you should learn from the experts, humans who teach code. That being said, AI models that can code will be useful to experienced programmers who want to accelerate the pace at which they already develop. Based on the results of this video and my own personal career experience at Silicon Valley and Stanford, my personal recommendation is to use GitHub Copilot with the ChatGPT extension. GitHub Copilot will autocomplete the trivial stuff that you have to write, while the ChatGPT extension can look for bugs that are a little more difficult to spot and the bugs that I'm too lazy to figure out myself. However, you can also use Star Coder as opposed to GitHub Copilot with the ChatGPT extension as well. Doing so should give you a pretty similar result, but I'm just not a big fan of Star Coder's latency. And of course, in the near future, I'll be waiting for Gorilla to learn a few more APIs before I incorporate it into my own coding flow as well. Nevertheless, these tools not only accelerate my work, but they also make my code more readable by virtue of the comments that they leave and their very descriptive variable names. After all, computer code is meant to be written by humans for humans so that we programmers can communicate our ideas and work with each other as simply as possible. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna take a break, step away from the computer for a bit and rejuvenate my brain. Hey Siri, can you help me make coffee? Coffee is a beverage prepared from roasted coffee beans, darkly colored bitter, and slightly acidic. 